Good afternoon, my name is Stephen Capaldo from ECAD Unity Ministries in North Providence, Rhode Island. Thank you for coming and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to continue in the series of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And uh, we're up to Galatians chapter 3, so we'll go through that and get some of the, the wonderful principles that the uh, Apostle Paul has, uh, ha has written down for us uh, forever to be part of our lives of faith. Uh, we just uh, like to thank you, Father, for everything that uh, that you do, and thank you for watching over us. And we ask that your prayers, will, that your uh, blessings, will be with us as we pray to you. We come before you with a spirit of meekness and humility. Uh, we ask that you edify uh, us with your word, and that uh, the word that is spoken today will be useful to all those who will hear it. Uh, we thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Galatians chapter 3, starting at the beginning, verse 1, O foolish Galatians, to whom before your eyes Christ Jesus was clearly portrayed as crucified, who bewitched you? So what would you say there? Who bewitched you? What's got into you? You know, what's happened to you? You've departed from the faith. You had the faith. You understood that the, Christ, that the flesh is crucified. You understood that, that that was part of the, the redemptive work of Christ, is that the, the flesh is crucified. Those desires have been cast aside, and now you desire to ascend into the heavenlies. You decide, desire to have the, the higher things, you know, the higher... Uh, order of being, the, truly the spiritual life and not the lusts of the flesh. But now you're being foolish and somebody has bewitched you. Only this one thing I wish to learn from you. Let me ask you this one question, right? Did you take the spirit from works of legalism or from hearing in faith? No, you didn't get the spirit from any works. You know, you got the spirit by faith. Faith in, is believing in uh, the living Christ, the, the risen Savior, right? Be believing in Christ. And then that gives you... Uh, that, that gives you eternal life when you believe in Christ. That's the, 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 the gift, the free gift that was given and reser is reserved for everyone. That gift of eternity, eternal life, and that gift of uh, being, you know, reborn, uh, you know, in his image. That free gift you have accepted by faith. You've believed. So then what's the problem? Why do you behave this way? In this way, you're a foolish. Although you began in the Spirit, will you now be made complete in the flesh? So now you've believed in Christ, so you think that now you're going to get the riches and reward of the heavenly kingdom by operating on the kingdom of darkness? No, that's... Uh, you can't be trans... You can't be sort of translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of, of God and then go back to the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God is going to reward you. So this is the thing. People go back and forth, right? Did you suffer so much in vain? I mean, all the things that you've gone through, you know, as a, as a witness of your faith, you know, was that for nothing? Now you're just going to go back to the way you used to live? Then you are in vain. Therefore, the one who provides the Spirit for you and works miracles among you, is it from works of legalism or from hearing by faith? Just as Abraham believed in God and it was counted to him as acts of loving kindness, he believed in God and so he was that, you know, he believed in in. Christ, the coming Messiah for eternal life, and so you know he had uh, uh, he had his salvation in that way. It was Jesus who provides the Spirit for you and works miracles among you, not from works of legalism. It was from hearing by faith that you grow. So then you know that those who are from faith, these are sons of Abraham. Those are uh, other believers, not the, not literally related or sons of Abraham, but but people who are kin by faith. And since the Scripture foresaw that God makes the heathens righteous by faith, makes believers believers if they believe. He proclaimed in advance to Abraham the good news that all the heathens, all the unbelievers, would be blessed in you. So blessed, uh, so in other words, the, the chosen people are going to spread the good news and those who believe the good news will, will be blessed. Now this, uh, this wasn't completed in the Old Testament, which is why God sent his son, the name above all names that we call upon, to show us once and for all the victory that we have over sin and death and hell. So that they're blessed because of faith, with the faith of Abraham. For as many as are from works of legalism, they're under a curse. So if you believe in works, human works, then you're under a, cur a curse. For it has been written that cursed is everyone who does not abide in all those things which have been written in the scroll of the teaching, all of those things of faith which have come from the Spirit of God, to do them. And that no one is made righteous in God by legalism is clear, because the righteous will live by faith. See, faith is the contrary of legalism, the legalistic attitude that man can take the place of God, that man can substitute uh, his teaching and his thinking and his works for those of God. 
the living God, Jesus Christ. And legalism is not by faith, but the one who does these things will live by means of them. So, if you live by legalism, that's the reward you get. If you live by faith, that's the reward you get. Two very different systems, two very different ways of living, two very different uh, systems of reward. Messiah, Christ, redeemed us from the curse of legalism when he became a curse instead of us, because it has been written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. We didn't have to be hung on a tree. He did that. He shed his blood to show us our victory. So he, he became that, that, that very curse. Uh, and then he rose, and then he ascended. But that's not the end of the relationship. We're supposed to have a living relationship with him now. He, he did settle a legal debt, but we shouldn't limit our uh, idea of faith to, well, you know, Jesus paid a legal debt, and then he kind of went away. And so, you know, most of Western Christianity says, well, okay, that's nice. You know, you don't really, uh, you can't really, or don't really have to have much of a relationship with him. He's up there, and, you know, maybe he's going to come back someday. But he, the big thing is he paid the legal debt, and you believed in it. Uh, which you needed to do, but but I think fundamentally we often make a mistake in, in Western Christianity at least. We kind of leave it at that and we don't look at you know the living God in us and having a real relationship that is continuing, that is ongoing, that doesn't stop. And yes, he did get rid of the curse of legalism. He showed us once and for all we have victory over sin and death. Uh, but Christianity is not simply about taking care of some legal thing. It's about a relationship based on that and on the, the resurrection, especially the resurrection power, having a real relationship with God and growing in knowledge and understanding of who He is, which means we start to understand more who we are in Christ. So that the blessing of Abraham would come to the heathens by means of Christ Jesus, so that we could take the promise of the Spirit through faith. In other words, not through legalism, through faith. Brothers, I'm speaking according to man, Likewise, of man, no one sets aside or adds a codicil to a will, something additional to a will, that has been made valid. So, the word, the word is the word. It is what it is. You don't add to it. You don't subtract from it. Uh, we are to believe it. We are to live in it. But, you know, we don't, there's, there's nothing more that's needed and there's nothing less there. And the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. It does not say, and to the seeds, as upon many, but as upon one, and to your seed, the, the word of God, who is, who is Messiah. And I say this, when a covenant has been made valid by God, the teaching coming after 430 years does not invalidate to do away with the promise. So that, that 430 years, um, that's was in Egypt before the, uh, the the Torah, the Word of God, was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Uh, it's the, the Word of God is eternal. When a covenant has been made valid by God, the teaching coming after 400 years does not invalidate the promise. The promise always was, it is, and always will be. It's just that it was given in the, in the form of the, uh, of the Ten Commandments, uh, just to give a very clear summary of God's commandments to Moses at Mount Sinai, and it doesn't it doesn't take away anything from the Word of God. The Word of God, Christ, is eternal, and the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's uh, you know just at certain times, you know, God has a plan to do certain things, and He revealed the Ten Commandments, uh, and then the six hundred and thirteen rules of the law, but especially the Ten Commandments, He revealed and gave uh, specifically to Moses on uh, Mount Sinai without changing anything of the Word of God. That's, that's the point. For if the inheritance is from the letter of teaching, it is no longer from a promise, but God has freely given to Abraham through a promise. So the, the Word is the Word. It's, it's everlasting, eternal. Therefore, what is the teaching? It was added on account of the transgressions. That's the, the rules of the law. Until the seed would come, Jesus Christ, for whom it has been promised, since it has been dictated through angels by the hand of a mediator. Since uh, Jesus Christ's coming has been prophesied, um, until then, to account for transgressions, God gave the 613 rules of the law uh, in addition to the Ten Commandments. But the 613 rules of the law were for Israel at that time. And, uh, you know, as I've taught m many times, it's not, it's, it's something that is it's not it's not required because we're not uh, we're not under that format we're not under the 613 rules of the law if there are things in the law that you believe jesus is calling you to do you know you have your freedom in christ you're free to to observe or not to observe but uh, as a matter of law we are not required because now we have the fullness of the revelation of jesus christ 
And the mediator who represents someone is not the one, but acts on behalf of another party. But God is one. So, you know, it's uh, God is one. Now, angels may have come to given you to come to tell you that Jesus Christ would come, but you know, God is really the the one who's sending the message through the angels to us, and God is one. Uh, the Father on the throne, His Spirit throughout the universe, and He comes down. His Son comes down in the form of a man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore. Is the, the old teaching contrary to the promises of God? God forbid what was given in the Old Testament. It's, not, it's, it's part of the Word of God. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody is called to the same exact calling, but it's all part of the, the progressive revelation of the Word of God, the old and the new. For if a Torah was given, that which was able to make alive in truth, righteousness would have been from Torah. But the Scripture has imprisoned everything under the power of sin, so that through faith in Christ Jesus, the promise would be given to those who believe. So this is, again... It's salvation is not from legalism. Salvation is not from works. Salvation is from faith in Christ Jesus. That he would come, that he's here, that he will come. That, that, that cornerstone, that reference point is always Christ. And uh, he was revealed in the past. He came, he died, he was resurrected, he ascended. And he will return, and in a way, in the believer, he's never left. But coming back physically, that's a, that's a different thing. Um, he will return, but he is inside of the believer as well. So I think there that we don't really need to get all bogged down in all of these uh, all of these uh, tribulation theories and all of this. You know, that's as one of my favorite uh, messianic rabbis said. You know, I've studied all of these tribulation theories, and I'm all tribbed out. And I, that's kind of the way it is. It's, it's, not, it's not up to us to set the dates. You know, God is in charge of the calendar. The Father is in charge of the calendar. When will Jesus return? It's when the Father says he will return. That's when he will return. Therefore is Torah the, Torah, the word of God, contrary to the promises of God, God forbid. For if that word was given, that which was able to make alive, in truth righteousness would have been from the law. And it's not from the law. The scripture has imprisoned everything under the power of sin, so that through faith in Christ Jesus, the promise would be given to those who believe. And before faith came, we were held in custody under tradition, being kept prisoner against the coming faith that was to be revealed. So, uh... This is it. We had the Ten Commandments, which are universal, but we also had the 613 rules of the law. And the, the Torah are the first five books, and the 613 rules of the law are in the first five books. So uh, that's, that's really this, the, what's in mind here is the laws, that the law was given at a certain time when that's, uh, you know, we didn't have the full revelation of Jesus Christ. And so we had uh, rules. And, but what, what Paul is saying here is that before faith, before the fullness of Christ came, we were held in custody under tradition, being kept prisoner against the coming faith that was to be revealed. So the word has become our custodial guide to Christ so that we could be made righteous by faith. And since faith has come, we are no longer under custody. So the word of the Old Testament, the Torah of the Old Testament, the 613 rules of Messiah, they were kind of, they, they were our guide at the time, but now faith has come. Jesus Christ has come. So we, that's that guide. You know, if people want to observe tradition, they're free to do it, but it's not a requirement. We're, we're, not, we're not under that custodial guide. We've been made righteous by faith, and faith has come, so we're no longer under custody. That means the 613 rules of the law. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into, into faith, baptized into Christ, you have been clothed with him. For there's not one Jewish or Greek, neither Jew nor Greek, this is the famous Galatians 3.28, not one slave or free, there is not one male or female. Unity of faith Jewish and non-Jewish believers, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are of Christ, then you're the seed of Abraham, heirs according to the promise. And so that's Galatians chapter 3. So I'll stop there. I'll read you John 3.16 for your witnessing this week. That's, uh, you know, how God loved the world uh, so much that he gave his only begotten son. Car Dieu a tant aimé le monde qu'il a donné son Fils unique, afin que quiconque croit en lui ne périsse point, mais qu'il ait la vie éternelle. Ибо так возлюбил Бог мир, что отдал Сына Своего Единородного, дабы всякий, верующий в Него, не погиб, но имел жизнь вечную. Porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo, que dio a su Hijo unicénito, para que todo aquel que cree en Él no perezca, mas tenga vida eterna. 
Infatti Dio ha talmente amato il mondo da dare il suo figliuolo unigenito affinché chiunque crede in lui non perisca ma abbia la vita eterna. Sepse per onzia e desce at botten sa da birin e ti ti vete mingiurin che custa che bison niente te mosum basen por te ketie yetitie periechme. For God so loved the world, he gave his uniquely born son, so that those who believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. We thank you, Father, very much for the blessings of this day. We ask that this message will be edifying to those who hear it, and will help them learn more about you and grow in knowledge of grace and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Betsy.